yeah welcome back again so yesterday uh, i discussed two aspects one is the k means cluster analysis we solved a numerical problem we also discussed about one case study where we applied the k means cluster analysis where we also we used there the a multi object optimization technique called a constraint method and we discussed about case study uh, named as sriram sagar project with three conflicting objectives so today i am continuing my journey with the fuzzy cluster analysis and i also discuss about 223 validation indices and dependent time availability i can cover 223 case studies so when talking about the cluster analysis i told you at that yesterday the purpose of cluster analysis is to group the data sets to cluster the data sets when i am doing the k means cluster analysis it is understood that the data is crisp or the data understanding the data is precise that means whatever data coming to me i am assuming that it is present and please also note that in the case of k means cluster analysis a data set belong to only one cluster that means if, if there are three clusters are there if data set a1 is there a1 belongs to only one cluster or in other words the membership function of a1 in the particular cluster is one the membership function the membership value of that a1 in other two clusters are zero which is which i am trying to convey it is a typical arrangement of if i, I will be here i will not be there so this is a typical chemist cluster analysis where the lines are drawn very clearly I, i either i belong to here or here definitely not both with understanding that the data is present so when i come to fuzzy generally what is fuzzy fuzzy means in principle and ambiguity that means that that means that what are the cluster analysis that we are discussing we are assuming that what our data coming to us is not present so most of the time the data uh, may not be present may be present so depend on situations i can think of either go for k means analysis or fuzzy cluster analysis but compared k means k means cluster analysis the fuzzy cluster analysis having some flexibility because number one it handles some mean precision again contradictory to the k means algorithm here the data set in the case of fuzzy cluster analysis belongs to all the groups that means my number let us assume i am i am having three groups and i am having a data set a1 my membership function in the group 1 may be 0.8 my membership function in group 2 may be 0.15 my membership function in group 3 is 0.05 that means that the summation of membership function must be one because i am a1 is only one so but so wherever my membership function value is highest in the particular cluster i will take that cluster as my parent cluster so it looks very simple too simple in fact the included mathematics as compared to came is algorithm but i'll explain again with a numerical problem and you can stop for any discussion maybe after after explaining the fuzzy cluster analysis so i am going for fuzzy cluster analysis number one when the data is imprecise when our fuzzy cluster analysis is there what i mentioned here there may not be any unique number what unique numbers function either one or zero it won't be possible here otherwise the procedure is almost same as the k means with with minor changes with minor changes so i made a typical flow chart don't worry about flow chart i will explain it in numerical problem so here if yesterday if you remember i mentioned here my object function what i mentioned here the minimization of error here also h i k may be square is nothing but the error only the error between what the error between is what the data set and the group we yesterday same thing i am request to compare everybody compare with k means fuzzy cluster where moon parallel track 
so what is eta here eta is the membership function of the data set in that cluster if i don't anything initially i can assume my membership function is one otherwise i can assume some other member i am explaining the problem so eta is membership function value in the case of kemis algorithm it is one or zero but here also to start with i can assume one or zero but as as time is progressing the membership function of the data set a1 let us assume we vary between two two groups if one group is pointed other group is point and here alpha is a parameter which is deciding me how we can go ahead about it step number 2 i mentioned here identify number of clusters iterations same thing as that of kemins algorithm again same story random assignment of each is because my mechanism remains say what is mechanism i want to classify the data set into some groups as simple as that so yesterday how we picked the membership function wherever wherever error is minimum for example i am a1 i take three clusters the distance between a1 and the group one a1 g2 a1 g3 wherever error is minimum i am assuming that i belong to particular cluster it is simple process because i am assuming that data is precise no ambiguity no confusion in this case the number of points were computing in a different mode however the same distances whatever distance i used here yesterday the a1 to g1 a1 to g2 a1 g3 still holds good only in stead of taking one or zero concept he would try to compute the number of function using some type of an, a transformation function here i am using the word partition matrix what is partition here whatever the a1 i am a1 I call me i am said a1 i am partitioning between group 1 group 2 group 3 that's the partition it divisions but at the end of the day the, the total sum of the my partition should be one because i am same here i am only one person so otherwise it is same mechanism whereas you can compare the k means fuzzy c means it's similar almost it's similar we are also computing here the the distances from the clusters from individual data set here also the same thing so i am going simple problem don't worry about this problem I, i i prepared a problem please note that i told you data is imprecise that means what what in meaning of 2 3 4 please note i, I shown you on triangle triangle number sequence here a1 b1 c1 what is b1 most likely what is to some other extreme what is for some other extreme so that means please note that the most likely value may be the most likely value may be 3 i am using word may may be 3 but even it may be 2 also it may be 4 also because i am not sure about aesthetic in the aesthetic crispr has what i have done here i simply take a single number only which is right because i am very clear that what exam i am going to speak but today i don't know that's why we are trying to make the data little bit imprecise if one number is there i am assuming that the data may be precise i can go for chemist question answers or you fuzzy questions also so anybody interested to have fuzzy question answers the data will be again either given like this either it will be given like a triangular membership function or even the single number also with understanding that data is imprecise number point number 2 here also like chemist question answers you are supposed to define where exactly this a1 is falling in the which group so this much information i am supposed to have because i myself I told yesterday it is random assignment of the data so this is step number 1 step number 2 so i told you here one word called membership function so what is membership function you can see a1 corresponding to g1 so what is membership function of a1 with respect to g1 one what is membership function of a1 with respect to g2 zero to start with is it right now this is a table i prepared here g1 you can see here what is body membership a1 with the terms of g1 this one 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 like this so this is my random partition matrix if we start one 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 we can do any numbers but at the end of the day what i told you the membership function values of g1 g2 should be equal to one that means it may point it point 0.2 so you can take any value like that 
regarding random numbers, random partition methods. I am repeating once again that the data will be either will be like this in the form of an, a triangle membership function or even some numbers, but we are assuming the data is impressive. The two ways, sir, I, I got I I got 30 marks. I'm not really sure. So I have two options. I am assuming that what are you telling me the truth? Second is what are you telling me is the false. So if I am if, if I am assuming the data is the false, or if I am not clear about the, that this number is 30 really, I can go for fudge. What is fudge? I told you the ambiguity. Some ambiguity is there because in the print situations, in the real world, there is no certainty in my opinion. Most of the time, moving the uncertainty. So step number one, some data will be given in the same format. You should assign the data into the some of the random clusters. So what is one one? This is nothing but your membership function values. Or you can see whatever the eta I am using here, this eta is nothing but these values. Eta for group number one, A1 is one. Eta group number two, A1 is zero. That is the way we are representing here. And one more term is here alpha. Alpha is a parameter, general alpha value take is equal to two, but they can take any value other than two also. But it expected that alpha will be greater than or equal to two. Then, so after that, what you have done here yesterday, we have taken the group mean of the individual groups. Is it right? Here also taking exactly same thing. You can see here. So what is how the 2.6, 4.4, 6.4 is nothing but what are the what are group one here? This one, two, three, four, five. So what I've done here, I simply take an average. But if you realistically ask me, the equation is like this. This is the eta to the power of alpha. But in the particular initial approximation, what is my what is my membership function value here? One. So I simply taken directly that piece one into something. So I simply take an average. If eta value is changing, you have to accordingly change the membership function value for multiplication. What is xi here? xi is nothing but these values of, I will, if you call, if you call this is x, this is y, this is z. That means I make group mean of three coordinate system. So you can see here, I got the c1, c2, c3, and the group mean of c1, c2, c3. Again, for a group one, again, group two, c1, C2, C3. So once I compute the group means, what is my second step to compute the Euclidean distance? Is it right? I started with the November, the, the distance between two points, which is nothing but the error. So what I'm doing now, I'm computing now the distances. Since it's a triangular membership function format, which we assumed it, the distance between two triangular fuzzy numbers can be computed as Paj minus Pj, which is nothing but one is one is data set A1. What Paj or Paj is data set A1. Pj is nothing but the group mean of the particular respective element. So what I'm doing now, I'm exactly doing exactly what I did yesterday. I'm computing the distance between the two points. The first point is myself. Second point is group one. Again, what I'm doing next? The first point is A1. Second point is group mean of G2. That means you can see here how many data sets are there? There are nine data sets are there. What I'm doing now, I completed here the distances. Is it right? Distance error one, error two, error three. This I'm calling as 5.2. It is exactly same as of K means cluster analysis provided your, your membership function as assumed starting is. So this I am denoting as H1, H1 to H13 like this. Please note that what is A1 to G1? This is nothing but in principle an Euclidean distance, a linear Euclidean distance. What is H11? The distance of data set one from cluster one. What is H21? The distance of the distance of data set one from cluster two. We have two clusters we have taken here. Cluster one. Accordingly, I have given some notations here for better understanding. In the previous case of k-means, how we computed here? Whichever, this, this is minimum, this is 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26, 9.26,
5.92. In the study came in algorithm, how you have taken? I have taken that where the error is minimum. I assume that I belong to the particular cluster. Because, because the assumption we made, because the data is precise. But in this case, I am assuming data is imprecise, which means my membership function need not be one, may not be one. Because what tagline here, one second I am telling you, tagline is that data sets are imprecise. What data coming to me, I am not confident about the data body coming to me. That is the reason I, I move to the fuzzy cluster analysis. So you can see here, this is the distances. So this is the distances. Distance between what? Data set one, cluster one, data set one, cluster two. So what is my interest now? My interest is to compute the membership function for data set A. Is it right? Data set A2, data set A3, data set A4. So what I'm doing now, again, I'm going back to my flow chart, which I shown some time back. You can see data is nothing but what? The updated membership function, the updated membership function. You can see this H is nothing but your Euclidean distance. Here I have taken alpha value as two. So this become square. So having said so, what exactly I'm not doing? I'm doing a, a simple mechanism, not even simple, too simple. What is this eta? Eta is nothing but the membership function of data set A1 in cluster 1. So how we computed here? Again, I'm doing here H11, H11. Again, you can see here H11, H21. Exactly what are the equation I shown here? I try to substitute the value, given values for my better understanding. You can see what is eta I told you? The membership function of data set A1 in cluster 1. How much it is? 0 0.7099. Then what about my data set A1 in cluster 2? What is total membership function value? 1. So what about the remaining data set in the cluster 2? 1 minus of this. So you can repeatedly you can do that when the cluster sizes are increasing accordingly. So I, I prepared a table for a better understanding. You can see the A1, the membership function is in the cluster one is 0 0.7099, cluster to 0 0.290. Like this, I made for all the data sets. Up to then perfectly fine. But but if somebody wants to me know how I'm going to do, what I'm doing, you know, I'm if someone asks me finally, sir, where are you in principle? In principle. I am in the group where membership function value is higher. Or if I say, if someone asks me still more clarity in a crisp way, sir, where which group belongs? I belong to the group in technicality in the cluster number one. The other cluster it will be zero. Then point number one. So next time this is this is iterative process. Please this is iterative process until my termination criteria is satisfied so further what i'm doing i'm simply so what are membership functions of 0 0.709 and 0 0.2901 next iteration this this previously what is my membership function values here this is the membership function values in the next iteration these values will be replaced by these values 0 0.7099 0 0.2901 based on these values only again you are computing once again your group mean and your process will be repeated until the, the terminus criteria is reached. So this is a, a typical simple fuzzy cluster analysis where you can try to understand the advantage. What is the advantage here? Because we are trying to, we are able to consider whatever possible uncertainty in this process. Because it, I mentioned some time back, the two two possibilities to me some data coming to me option number one i am assuming that data is perfect that means what that means what there is ambiguity i belong to one of the group no confusion what is the second possibility data is coming but i am not believing the data that means there is some imprecision in the data some ambiguity in the data so when 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 I'm assuming, when I'm presuming that the data is having some ambiguity, I cannot apply a typical k-means algorithms. When the k-means algorithm may do wonders, 
when well i am assuming that i is that i is having some difficulty levels so that is the reason the fuzzy logic fuzzy cryptology is getting benefit uh, the day by day because because its advantage of differentiating between the the membership function of the data sets is it right that's why you can see here if you see the table here once again the membership function of data set 1 in the cluster 1 is 0.70 otherwise i would take in that as 1 that means how much mistake i am doing i am i am doing mistake of almost 30% that means that much ambiguity is there so this process can be repeated until my termination criteria is reached so this numbers mainly we we sometimes will call that as a the defugification but doesn't matter if someone asks me at the end of the day where are you belong technically i can say i belong technically the group one otherwise this this generally is at the last moment for some clarification of the because people may not understand yeah, i am belong to 70.99 percent of this group people may not understood but people may understood if i belong to this group because my stakes are higher so this is a typical fuzzy cluster analysis yes professor rajgar can you continue and you can continue sir okay thank you so this is about fuzzy cluster analysis so after that i i wish to go a, a a beautiful advanced research area called cluster validation algorithms what exactly this meaning it is having a multiple features in in principle i am giving a layman example i am having Two two hundred data sets, two thousand to twenty thousand dollars doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I same algorithm may work out. Maybe here and there you have to modify your algorithms. As simple as that. Maybe you require computation requirements, computation machines. Otherwise, structure of your algorithms almost similar. But the logic is that there are two hundred data sets are there. The first question I should ask myself. what is the appropriate number of clusters for this data otherwise what you will do i will try to do some mechanism sometime it come okay this optimum cluster set they may not be having any flexibility what is flexibility what i can do i take two hundred data sets i try to check that for the data set which i am having for the features which i am having what is the optimum size optimum size which fits to my requirement that is the a beautiful advanced research area where most of you can explore in this lecture i am showing you two three but there are number of validation indices are available you can you can browse a lot of information about validation indices anybody who wants to work in machine learning and data mining algorithms in future this is one of the research area where you can really explore so there are number after that i show some case studies how to find optimum size but here i like here i am explaining a simple very simple but very effective validation techniques which will tell you optimum cluster size optimum cluster size so what i am doing now i am explaining them briefly how to do a simple computation but after that i am i am showing a around two to three case studies for better understanding how you apply this validation indices now the first time starting with an indices is called davis bolden validation index i am using our validation at the end of the day somebody telling me or somebody should i should tell somebody please note this many data sets are available out of this this many data sets i can group this much which in opinion okay please note that most of these validation indices works with two concepts one is what 
inter cluster second is inter cluster one is between what within the group second is what between the two groups between the two groups so here what is this delta x say this nothing but error within the group error within the group what is x i x j the distance between the distance between what distance between the two group means this nothing but the one intra cluster one is intra cluster most of the valuation algorithms one way or other way depends on these two parameters along with some other parameters but mainly intra cluster distances intra cluster distances are in principle in simple terms error within the group error between the two groups so this is a, a first algorithm i am explaining a with a simple numerical example how followed by i will explain you about the dense i will explain very briefly about your statistic yesterday in one of the example i explained this your statistic i am not repeating once again so as mentioned earlier what is dv means dv means the davis bolden what is the u u is nothing but the cluster size which what is meaning of that i take some data sets two and data sets i will check it out what is the davis bolden index value when cluster size is 3 that means i am checking the davis bolden index value when cluster size is 3 so again i will do for davis bolden next value for cluster size 4 i will do repetitively until until i my range is completed so so then then you can see sir which dv index value i should take we should take the minimum dv index value or in principle i prefer a cluster which is having minimum dv index value so what i'm doing now i'm showing an a simple numerical problem where i am computing the db index for three clusters three clusters that means my data sets are there are some data sets there are some data sets are there the data sets i am using to compute the davis bolden index then you may ask sir how can link davis bolden index should link the davis bolden index with the your clustering algorithm that means it is repetitive process what i can do let us assume i i am k means algorithm what i do i take three clusters i group them into three clusters next routine it will, it will tell you what davis bolden index value for the three clusters that means like this i will try for four clusters in k means i can compute the davis index value for the four clusters this process repeats until my range is completed that means i should have some idea also what is minimum value and maximum value of the cluster which i can track as mentioned earlier yesterday please note that these are these are the tools these are the tools be very clear about your physical problem you should very clear you should very confident about your case study otherwise these are the tools so what i am doing now you can see here as mentioned earlier you can see the k is the number of clusters let us assume i have simply taken the k i am trying for davis bolden index value for the three clusters so what i am doing now i am computing the davis index value for the cluster 1 cluster 2 and the cluster 3 like this i am doing the same mechanism so i am uh, in anyway. so the so problem is will be given like this you can uh, you can like then so what is happening here there are nine data sets are there out of nine data sets are i am running my problem for the three clusters so how many clusters means what three groups so you can see here there is 1 2 3 falling in group 1 4 5 6 falling in group 2 7 10 falling in the group 3 how i know this output i am getting from the either chemist cluster analysis or the fuzzy cluster analysis then what is c1 c2 c3 these are nothing but your criterion values so what i am supposed to do i am supposed to what is cv here cluster validation index what i am supposed to do i am supposed to compute the davis bolden index value for this three cluster problem problem will be repeated to all my similar with 4 5 6 but it may be difficult for you 
beyond certain level to do manually. That means you are supposed to write a simple code in MATLAB or maybe some other programming environment to get the divisible index values. Can I continue? Yes, sir, you can continue. Please, thank you. So, what I'm doing now, and what I'm interested, I told you, I'm interested to know the delta x with nothing but the error within the group, error within the group, distance between the, or uh, error between the two group means, or two clusters. So, what I'm doing now, how many groups I'm, I'm having here? Group number one, group number two, group number three. So what I'm doing, you know, the step number one, I'm computing group mean. How do you compute group mean here? 0.4 plus 0.25 plus 0.3 by 3. You can see here, 0 0.3, 0 0.317, 0 0.467, 0 0.267. Is it right? Then, and uh, here, what is uh, what is here delta x? Delta x nothing but the linear, linearized error. So what I'm doing you now, please see carefully. So this is the group one, this is data set one. What I'm doing you now, I'm computing, I'm computing the error between the data set one and the group two. How I'm doing it? 0.4 minus 0 0.31 square, 31 whole square, plus 0 0.65 minus 0 0.467 whole square, plus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.267 whole square. So you will get this value, 0.067. But what I want, I want a square, a square root distance, linear distance I want. So what I'm doing, I've simply taken square root of this data, we are getting 0.261. What is 0.261? This is nothing but the error, the linear, the linear error between the data set one and the group one. Again, what I'm doing, you know, again, I'm computing it. Again, one more job of, of data set two, data set 2 and group two. again what i'm doing you know 0.25 minus 0.317 whole square plus 0.4 minus 0.467 whole square plus 0.3 minus 0.267 whole square again i'm getting 0 0.010 again what i'm doing again i'm doing here s square so you are getting the delta x this delta x of what delta x of Taken clearly for data set one to group one, group mean, data set two, group mean, data set three to Typically, what I'm doing you now, I'm repeating it once again process between the data set four, data set five, data six, set six between the data set and from the group mean. How I got the group mean? This plus this plus this by three. So you are getting here the group mean. After what I'm doing you now, I'm computing here the square distance again the linear distance again I'm doing a, again a repetitive process of data set 7 data set 8 data set 9 and the corresponding distance between the data set and the corresponding group so at the end of the day what I'm getting here 0 0.261 0 0.100 0 0.179 this is for the delta x for the cluster one Delta X for cluster two, delta X for the cluster two. Since there are three linear, three three linear distances are there. What we are doing now? We are simply taking average of all these distances. That means what I am doing now? Please everybody carefully. What delta X? What delta X here? Delta X nothing but the average error between the data sets and the group. What I am doing now? You can see here one two six one point one zero zero point one seven. Now you can see here, this is the point to one. This is average error. Average error. Typical I'm doing for delta x2. Typical I'm doing for delta x3. So what I'm what is happening you now? Please note that. So I, I'm getting this delta x. What is what is for example, what is x? That means I am able to compute the decimal index between the two clusters. Cluster i, cluster j. Again, is it right? What if I take Cluster, cluster is 1, next cluster will be 2. If you take cluster 1, the next cluster will be 3. If you take cluster 2, the next cluster will be 3. How many comments are possible? 1, 1, no meaning. 
two two no mean three three no mean it is one two one three two three like this we are, we are going to compute here the Davis Gold index value. So what is delta x? What is if we, if we, if we cluster one? What delta x sign? Delta x or cluster one is nothing but this value point zero eight cluster two point two five five cluster three point two seven five. So with this is this one point. Second, what I want? I want distance between the two clusters. Two, always two cluster means what? Distance between the two cluster group means or distance between the two group means two clusters. How how we can get the group mean? Which is nothing but you can see which is nothing but what? I am not trying distance between the this group mean. So this group mean as well this group. That means what I am doing you now? Point three one seven minus point three four square plus This man, this whole square. This man, this whole square. You can see here exactly. We are able to get the distance again. This is also again a linearized distance. One is within cluster. Second is in between the clusters. In between the two clusters. So please note that now I got all the info, all the information which is required for me to compute my Davis Bode index. Please remember our request on the Davis Bode index value here. K is nothing but the number of clusters. In this case, it is a this is three. Okay. So what I am doing now, I am computing Davis Bode index value. Again, you see what I am doing now. Again, I prepared table for a better understanding. Our table not necessary. So diagonals are zero zero zero. G one to G two distance how much it is? Point four eight seven. G one to G three distance is point five one zero. This we prepared as a Consolidated table. What about point one eight zero? This nothing but your average values of your year. So once this table is ready, most of my problem is over. Now what remains now? Only now the substitution remains. Substitution of what? Substitution of this data in your Davis Bode index equation. So what I am doing now? I am now. I am now. Anyway, don't worry about this number. Now I want to check out the Davis Bode index for the Here, how many groups are there? Three groups are there. What I am doing now? I compute the Davis Bode index value for the group one. After that, group two. After that, group three. Later, what I will do? I will take the average of group one plus group two plus group three, which is going to give me the Davis Bode index for the for the particular cluster. So what I am doing now? I am doing a you know a simple molten job now. You can see. I, I prepared a simple process here. One by three. Why I have taken three? Because I have taken three clusters. And what is one to k? K is again the three. So what is x i? For example, if we take, let us assume the cluster as the first cluster, then i i becomes one. The j becomes two. What is x i? X i in that case, the distance between the x one and the x two, or the or the distance between the two cluster. Group. So what I am doing you now, I am computing the Davis Bode x value for the group one. That means what is the value of i? i is equal to one for me. Is it right? And what in that case, what is g value? What is the j value? J value becomes two because what a common is possible? There are two possibilities. If you see three clusters are there, please note that cluster one, two more clusters are there. Cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. So how many ways the cluster one can link to cluster two, cluster three, one two, one three? That's why written here the maximum. You can see maximum of. You can see cluster one. So delta G one next to J is equal to delta G two, delta G one. G2. Again, what other other combination possible? One three. So delta G one plus delta G G three plus delta G one G three. So please note that when the number of clusters are increasing, you know, maybe the number of clusters are ten. You will have here the multiple equations, where it is very difficult even for you to solve the problem manually after after certain clusters. You have to write some type of a programming framework. So what is happening you now? Maximum of what is delta G one value? What delta G one value here? G one point one eight zero. You can see point one eight zero. What delta G two value? Point two five five. You can see here. What is what is the distance between G one and G two? What between G one and G two? Point four eight seven. 
typically I'm moving to the next bundle. Delta G will remain same. What is delta G, delta G3 value again? You can see 0.275. What, do, what is G1, G3 distance here? G1, G3 distance how much it is? 0 0.510. So what I will do? This I simplify. You get this value. Simplify, I will get this value. Maximum of that, that, that is the equation, is it right? Maximum of this Davis Golden index for the cluster one. I have taken the first cluster. Second, what I'm supposed to take now? Second cluster. Second cluster, what a combination is now? 2, 1, 2, 3. That means my equation becomes what? Is it you can see here? The first equation remains same, is it right? Delta G2 plus delta G1 by delta G1 G2. Second is what? 2, 1 and 2, 3. That means delta G2, delta G3. Here G2, G3 will come. Again, you can find you can find exact same repetitive process. Again, we are getting here the Davis index value for the G2, that is maximum of this number. Typically, I'm doing one more iterative process for the G3. So the Davis index value for the cluster one is 0 0.8932, cluster two, 0.67, cluster three, 0.67. Since there are three values are there. Really, really, we, we may not sure how to handle this. We are, as per the size by the Davis Golden equation, we are simply taking here the average of the all the three Davis Golden index values. So, what is 12.07? 12.07 is nothing but the Davis Golden index value for this the data water provided to us. This value will change, the number of clusters are increasing. So, I prefer the optimum cluster size when the Davis Golden index value is minimum. So this is one other approach where you can write a simple code also very easily. You can write a MATLAB code. If you recollect there are I think some MATLAB routines also available for your better understanding. So this is typical Davis Golden index value. So I want a small discussion before I, I move forward. If it is okay for you. Professor Asgar. Sir, uh, uh, are you able to hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. Professor Asgar, can you continue or can you wait for five minutes for discussion? No, you can continue, sir. No problem. Okay. Or you, you want uh, you, you want to have a, a small discussion between the participants and myself? Any possibility? I think after you can give some time for the discussion at the end. Okay, okay, last. Okay. 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 So okay. the so the one of the promising approach as mentioned earlier is called the Davis Bolden index. I, I, as I mentioned repeatedly, most of these indices are based on intra cluster under the Intercluster distances. The second approach exactly called a simple same process called the dense index. Note that in this case, please note in the case of Davis Bolden index, you can see here the in the key here numerate this in the denominator. We are exactly swapping the numerator to the denominator. Naturally, it is expected that the maximum value of dense index is prefer otherwise it is a same mechanism you can see delta xi xj maximum delta x small changes here and there so please note that if if depending on the validation index value the optimum cluster size always changes so we are very careful while while picking up this this type of validation indices so what i am doing you know i am explaining briefly again the dumps index. So again, you can see the du, d, d represent for the dumps. So whatever data is with me previously, exactly I am using the same data for this computation of the dumps index for the cluster size 3. So what I am doing, you know, what is the denominator here? Maximum of delta xk. What is 1 here? Cluster number 1. What is k here? 
the body, the body, the crust that you take in here, the three. So I'm simply take, that means what? What of data is with me? It is simply asking which is the maximum value. Which is maximum value here? 0 0.180, 0 0.255, 0 0.275. So what is maximum here? 0.275. That means I am showing here the maximum value is 0.275. So this maximum value will be constant for all your computations. In the case of dumps index. Again, so this is my dumps index. So this is my equation. So my denominator is over. What is numerator now? Delta xi xc. What do you get? For example, if you take in the yeah. So somebody has query for the Rosgar. Yeah. Hello. Sir, you can continue, sir. Okay. okay. So, in the case of denominator, the maximum is nothing but the three delta x values 0 0.180, 0 0.255, 0 0.275. You can see here, so this is my, the max value of the delta x. -K. So, what if, then in that case, if you take the data set one, or cluster one, here I taken the three clusters. That means, note that three clusters are standing yet unique in different places. So if you take cluster one, what are the things I'm supposed to handle? Cluster one, cluster two, cluster one, cluster three. That's why written here, delta G1, G2, delta G1, G3. So this, they want the minimum of this. So how do I complete here? that uh, the delta g1 g2 because i know that delta g1 g2 value 0.487 so what i'm doing i'm simply substituting these values in this particular arrangement 0.487 what is delta g1 g3 delta g1 g3 is nothing but 0 0.510 so you can see here is 0 0.510 so the minimum of you can see this by this gives a what in principle 1.771, 1.854. So minimum of this number is 1.771. Again, what I am doing now, I am doing for the group two. Again, what do you mean? What how I am doing it? Two one, two three. Because two I cannot take. So two one, two three. So again, what I am doing now? Again, I am doing same mechanism like whatever done here. Group two it is G two G one, G two G three. The denominator remains same. Again, I'm computing here the, the, the index value for the cluster 2. This value coming here 0 0.109. Again, I'm doing same thing for the group 3. In the group 3, what are combinations now? 3, 1, 3, 2. I'm doing a repetitive process once again. I'm computing here that index value for the. So please note that for the first cluster, the dense index value is. 1.771, second cluster 0 0.109, third cluster 0 0.109. So what I'm doing, what is the dense index says? The minimum of this minimum of the each combination. That means what I'm doing you now, 0 0.1771, 0 0.109, 0 0.109, the, the minimum of all these things is 0 0.109. Please note that, please note that whatever the dense index this is based on the whatever the data we have taken for this analysis it may vary if the data sets are changing or if the number of clusters are changing as mentioned some time back it is very difficult even for you to do this manually maybe after four or five clusters because if you take five clusters you will have combinations like this how many combinations will have one one two 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Typically, is it right? Now you'll have four combinations. Sometimes it may be very difficult when your permitted combinations are increasing. So you can think of writing a, a simple code for your better understanding. So other technique is called yesterday I told you for your statistic based on this is error. So I'm now going to case studies. 
can i have a pause so that somebody can ask me questions or can i continue madam continue sir okay okay so till now whatever i i i discuss today based on the fuzzy crash analysis number 1 then two validation indices one is davis bull index second is called dens index the case which i am presenting the first case which i am presenting is based on one of one of a ph student work dr morankar it he completed ph in year 2014 so in this particular case study i am explaining you how to use the k means algorithm and in association with the number of validation indices so in fact this is a case study in the maharashtra called the case study area is called kadakpasala project in maharashtra it near pune here there are 20 irrigation systems are there 20 irrigation systems means 20 data sets there are five criteria you can see here the first criteria is uh, participation in cooperation effective water availability conjunct use academic status agriculture education the 20 irrigation systems generally we will call the distributaries in fact in the water resource context so what is my agenda our agenda is to find out what is the optimum cluster size for this irrigation sub systems so the question number 1 why should a cluster is it right there are 20 systems are there we want to cluster into a groups so that what are the treatment mechanism i can do what are the improvements i can make it i can improve here accordingly that means is a instead of improving 20 irrigation systems parallelly we prefer to group them into groups such that what the water treatment i am doing in the same group till uniform of the irrigation systems in either particular group so what exactly we are trying to do so this is my that 20 data sets this is uh, already told about the criteria we have taken a, a scale of 0 to 10 to evaluate these values that means what mg means here the medium good data is not with us this was done based on the interview with dr morankar f means fail g means good okay so these are the i will call link linguistic ratings but finally a scale was formed between 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 accordingly you can identify the numerical values for this particular criteria so this is a path matrix i will call in fact i can try, i can take this data i can use it i can try for k means also i can then i can try for in fuzzy c means also for the particular case study we will try only k means so this is about 20 data sets i am not trying to group to some appropriate some appropriate groups then so what i mentioned here my interest is always the optimum number of clusters is it right because how many how many groups i can make i can make 20 also i can make one also which is extremes but i was trying to understand how much i can do so here i used number of indices which was taught in in this particular lecture also i have taken here silhoti kalaski separation index davis bolden as well as davis i mentioned earlier sometime back wo band kare na wo log can you continue sir please continue sir yes yes okay. there is some disturbance okay thank you so i we have taken here five indices please note that we are very clear about which in which index you prefer your problem becomes more advantageous to you otherwise sometime it may i won't call uh, it sometime it may be more confusing also to you whatever i am showing you it is of it is of it is of that that situation so it very clear about which index is preferable to you we can check out the characteristics according you can pick up some index which is suitable to you 
or if you take up the indices like this i will tell you how much mathematically you should handle it the problem as mentioned earlier my agenda is very simple i am a 20 k systems i want to find optimum cluster size then so anyway this is about case study area details so this is my data sets this data is having some numerical values so here i used one platform called cweb cweb platform we can download from the matlab central file exchange that is cluster validation analysis platform here you can find out if you remember at least 5 6 clustering algorithms and good number of cluster validation techniques so what i have done here i am and 20 data 20 data sets sometime back i told you i should be very clear what is the range of the clusters that means i should be i should try so you can see here the minimum cluster size i have taken the two the maximum is 10 that your choice to handle the range that means what i am what i am telling i am trying to find out the optimum cluster size within this range of between 2 to 10 it your call you should very clear you should have a lot of clarity before applying to your practical problems so what exactly you can see i prepared table for a better understanding initially initially i don't have any idea i simply start with two clusters how many data sets i am having here 20 data sets so when i am entering when i am when i am clustering two clusters in one cluster the 11 data sets are falling in second cluster the 11 data nine data sets sets are falling or it is 50% 40% of the combination what is the squared error it is nothing but yesterday i told you the error how how can compute error xi minus x bar square what is xi the individual data set what is x bar square x bar the group mean of the cluster if if there are two clusters are there that is uh, what i am supposed to do i am simply taking this 11 data sets i am computing error of the individual data set minus x bar of the particular group square like this i am doing here here yeah. again what i am doing the next i am assuming that data sets are falling three clusters because i what is the range i told you two to 10 clusters some range i should have idea then what about three what about three clusters in if you take three clusters 10 are falling in one cluster two are falling other cluster eight are falling in other cluster is it right so in that case the error is this much please note that as number of clusters are increasing the error is expected to fall because this is true when the data sets are not closely spaced then then we are having cluster 4 again with the cluster four is there you can see please note that as the number of clusters are increasing please note that the spread of the data sets are becoming more rigid like initially i mean two clusters three clusters four clusters what is error now 1607 but what is happening in one cluster only we are having the two data sets again i am going to the fifth cluster is it right what is spread here 5 5 5 3 what error here 1390 as the number of clusters are increasing what is what is going to happen what is going to happen ever we see in one cluster only one data set is there is it right only one data set please understand that this is your single time again my cluster is becoming 7 error is 1033 then what is the error 1033 How we how it is spreading? Four, four, three, three, two, one, three like this. Again, I am going to eight, nine, ten. If you becoming you see, if you becoming the nine, you can see you become eight cluster. What is happening here? In one one cluster, one is there. Another cluster, another one is there. One cluster, two are there. Naturally, because there are ten clusters are there. is it right we are trying to understand we should be very clear how we are going to solve the problem but please note that as the number of cluster increasing your, your error is decreasing that is very good sign it is going to happen then then what is my agenda i told you i want to find out optimum cluster size for this case study 
Then I also told you I am trying to handle here the five cluster validation indices. Five, not one. Five. So what I am doing you now? I prepared a table. These are the some of the properties, characteristics of each index: Silhouette, Kalinsky, Separation, Lewis Bolden. Then so you can see here these are the different features on which I am evaluating this validation index. Some time back I told you. So you can see here. For example, in the case of Dems index, I told you the minimum value Dems in the Davis Bolden index is better. In the case of Dems, the highest value is preferred. So this type of compare table always helps you to think calmly how to go ahead about it. You know, my suggestion is that you pick up any index which you, which you convince it that it, 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 is, it is going to help you instead of taking this many. Then, so don't worry about this table for cluster size two, for cluster size two, the index the zero index value is 0.2476. Dunn's index value is 1.4099. Dave's index value is 1.3707 like this. These are the indexes values for the cluster. Okay, what is 4389? What I have done, I ranked this indices values based on my interest. So for example, here Silhouette can see here highest value is preferred. That means for me, this is the first rank. So once I get the indices values, I try to rank them. How it is trying to understand? One thing very clear, it is a little bit ambiguous. Is it right? You can see, for example, in the case of cluster 3, Dunn's index told this optimum cluster. How in optimum cluster? The first rank. But you can see here, for Silhouette, optimum cluster size is 10. Varies 3, varies 10, exactly opposite extremes. So this may happen when we are not very clear about which index value we can compute which index value we can pick up. Just for open understanding, what you've done here, whatever the ranks are there, I added the, all these ranks so that I'm 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 understanding that I am doing a, some type of a group decision making, nothing else. Finally, I finally what I've done here, wherever the less rank is there, I'm assuming that that is the optimum cluster size. It is an approximation. This is an approximation approach because I have taken five. I don't know how to discard the other methods. So one of the approach I thought is that I can try about here the some type of addition of the ranks. Finally, I narrowed down that what are the 20 data sets are there. I can handle in the form of the three groups from all my understanding. How these three, 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 three groups are you can see here. You can see here for the data set one, cluster one. Data set two, cluster three. Data set three, cluster one. Like this, we are able to make into three groups. Then perfectly fine. So we made three groups, sir. What next? What next is that? I try to we try to make a, a small summary. Group one, these are the improvements we are expected to do. Please note it. Group two. These are the improvements we are supposed to do. Group three, these are the improvements we are supposed to do. Is it right? That is the purpose. Always to prefer a data sets in a homogeneous group so that for me, whatever I am trying to do, do, do the suggestions, I am doing uniformly for, for A1, you can see here, A3, next what? A6, A9, A10, A11. Like, like this, wherever it is falling into one cluster. So please note that cluster analysis or fuzzy clusters having a lot of potentiality. When you apply with the validation techniques, that will be more wonderful work. In discussion, till now, can I continue? Sir, yes, sir, continue, sir. Okay. Uh, I'll ask uh, just for, for a few minutes, we'll ask the uh, participants, sir. So I request uh, the participants if you have any queries so far. You can uh, chat here so that we can have that interaction. Then Sar will continue for the rest. Okay. So can you stop at five twenty for the discussion? Uh, yes, sir. We will stop for five minutes. Then we will ask them because we have a still twenty four for twenty five minutes more. So five minutes we'll have a discussion. Then you can resume, sir.
is that all right sir is that okay no no are you expecting me to wait for the discussion or can i continue uh, i think it is better to continue because people will ask maybe at the end sir we will continue okay then what i will do i will continue up to around 520 or 525 then people ask me questions okay sir right sir even after 5 then doesn't matter for me. okay sure sir sure, sure. okay thank you so this advantage of making the data set into the groups because easy for me do do the things in a group wise instead of doing any things in a independent ways the second case study uh, it is based on the work of myself and professor nagesh published in lantic hydrology so again i want to very briefly what is what here we applied here in the previous case what is me taking we applied there k means and five validation basis in this case study we try to apply cluster analysis and the fuzzy cluster analysis and only one index called the davis bolden index so the problem very simple i am having here 159 159 159 meteorological stations i want to group them in india in fact i want to group them based on certain parameters so what are the parameters parameters are nothing but location location parameters and some of the observed variables so it is very simple now my, my data sets consisting of 159 data sets and good number of criteria which i'm using a word as the features f e a t u r e s then so that means my data sets what is my body pair matrix size 159 cross 8 then so this is the case study area what are the points we are showing here these are nothing but your the metrological stations what you want to do we want to group them for homogeneity purpose so that what are the improvements i can do one metrological station in a particular group remaining stations also it holds applicable then so this is location map of all the metrological stations then so what i have done here here i try to use here both techniques one the fuzzy cluster analysis and the cluster analysis i told you sometime back the fuzzy cluster analysis having a lot of advantage as compared to cluster analysis so what i have done here to find the optimum cluster size to find the optimum cluster size i used the fuzzy cluster analysis as the basis that means what optimum cluster size i am trying to get with the fuzzy cluster analysis then what i have done here what i told you there are one of the data sets so what range i have taken here i have taken range of 3 to 20 clusters what is meaning of that i i started with problem three clusters i am running up to 20 clusters so you can change your range 3 to 10 also 5 to 10 also 6 to 15 also that your choice of handling the problem we have taken here thousand iterations and uh, and uh, this is the termination criteria when the difference between two successive iterations are less than this we can stop it the algorithm can be terminated like this you can prepare any number of criterion termination criteria of your convenience and uh, so see what this type of figure this type of data is shown in previous case study also so what is my cluster size started here Three. Where is where is stopped here? Twenty. You can see the error is technically falling, but not so jumped away as compared to the previous case study. So this squared error value, as number of cuts are increasing, the squared error value is expected to fall. Not so drastically because, in my opinion, the data is closely spaced, which means that sometimes the likely chance, like this type of bumps so we had very careful before applying any of this machine learning data mining algorithms you should check your data once again what is status of data 
any cleaning out data is really required or not. Then, after the what I am doing, you know, water water process explained you some time back. The Davis Gold Index computations at the same computation, but this time using the MATLAB. So my figure looks like like this. You can see what in cluster size variation three to twenty. So what is Davis Gold Index value? I am starting with three, ending with twenty. So you can see here where is the what is status of the Davis Gold Index value? The minimum index the minimum index value is preferable. That means. The optimum cluster size in this case, what is the number? 14. We have taken. How we, how we got 14? What are the assumptions? Assumption is that we have taken the fuzzy cluster analysis as the base algorithm. Base means what? A benchmarking algorithm for the analysis. So, what I'm doing now, I have taken this data set into 14 clusters, which means my data sets, my, my, my problem with debating how many clusters now? 14 clusters. 14 clusters. Then, so you can see here, actually 14, what is the range of clusters I have taken here? 3 to 20. But optimum cluster is coming is 14. This typical table of the fuzzy cluster analysis, what I told you in the fuzzy cluster analysis, remember, summation of all these values are expected to be 1. You can see here, in the data set one, that is that for me, data set one, nothing but the, the matter of station number one. Its membership function value in the cluster one is 0.1867, two this much, three this much, like this, like this, like this. But what is summation of all these values? Summation of all these values are equal to one. If we, we, start, we want to solve the same problem, we, this is the way we try to compute it. Then, if someone asks me, See, option number one, this is the membership function of data set one in all the clusters. Somebody wants to more know, still more clarity, where are you, which group it belongs. Then I will say, since my, since my membership function is higher in the cluster three, I am calling myself as cluster three. So like this, like this, I am able to do for all the data sets. You can see here all the data sets. I am showing one more table. You can see here that you can see that you have seen nothing but the cluster analysis. Cluster analysis. You can see in the data in the in the cluster one, in the cluster one, the number of metal stations are 12, 11, 14. You can see these are almost varying uniformly. Because I assume that data is imprecise. Now I'm coming to question analysis. What is question analysis? I told you data is assumed to be perfect. Again, you can see what is happening in this case. In this case of question analysis, what is happening here? In the cluster one, there are 18 are there. Cluster two, one. Cluster four, two. Cluster seven, one. Cluster 13, two. Cluster 14, there is no uniform division of metrological stations in the case of cluster analysis. So always be clear, try to adopt the techniques which handles imprecisionness in a much more effective way. Then, so this is for the cluster analysis and fuzzy cluster analysis. So this, we prepared a small map, how this classification was made. You can see there are 14 clusters based on the fuzzy cluster analysis. You can see how they are classified based on the different groups. What the advantage I mentioned earlier, any improvement I want to in a group, I need to worry, I can grow, I can improve, I can improve based on the each group Characteristics. I need not go for the individual data sets. I can handle them as part of the group only. As part of the group only. So this is about the simple example of the fuzzy and the fuzzy clusters as well as the cluster analysis. Anyway, this I shown you. But 
what the advantage advantage is very simple you are you are you are able to focus much better in in in, in case of groups other than handing everybody in a individual manner so it is very 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 important wherever you feel there is homogeneity in the data you try to make the data a small clusters so that easy for you to handle coordinate it's just like you know your project groups then you take two to three students in a group but what in the group they are like minded they want to do the work in a similar way so yesterday somebody asked me about the clustering of gcms i this is one of the paper of myself and against appeared in 2016 journal of water and climate change i'll tell very briefly we have taken here 36 gcms purpose is very simple i want to whether i can cluster the i can cluster the similar gcms so that i can pick up one gcm for me from each cluster and i can use the, i can use this the pick 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 up clusters as ensemble and use it for all the further works ensemble nothing ensemble of gcms nothing but a group of gcms the output of this uh, output of group only we all consider for all the all the prediction purposes down even down scaling purposes also so that means what i can do instead of take take 37 rank them take top 4 for one way of saying it what other way of saying it cluster them make into some groups pick up one from each group so that water pick up each group you combine it and their combine their commerce can use it for the ensembling purposes actually somebody asking me so this is the the two clusters are there in one cluster data sets are gcms are falling in 32 second cluster it is 4 you can see here in the 32 cluster 32 32 gcms the represented cluster represented gcm is this represented gcm is this if if optimum cluster size is 2 i am going to use this 2 for my assembling purpose this will be taken for the maximum temperature the minimum temperature even combination of maximum and minimum temperature so like this you can try for the any number of analysis this is a dice bond index values squared error values you can see the curve is going so beautifully down this is dice bond index typically type for the minimum temperature we have taken for the average temperature so what i am trying to convey through these two lectures of yesterday and today please note that there are number of tools are there for me i will never term it as a tools number of tools are there the tools which i discussed yesterday today mainly related to the a data mining tools are you say a is one of the facet of the data mining tools where we discussed about a kemis algorithm we discussed about fuzzy semis algorithm we discussed about two validation techniques called davis bolden and the adams and yesterday we discussed about one case study where we were we talked about a three objective irrigation planning problem where we are having three conflicting objectives that we try to fix in the form of a multi object framework in using a constraint method then we are able to generate a, a pair of matrix the pair matrix tool has to handle then we gone for a clustering so that we can use the problem much effectively so what our data we have taken here 37 data sets we are able to make the six groups that is one case study yesterday today i discuss upon one about the a grouping of grouping of irrigation subsystems of 20 into three clusters using five validation techniques here i will hear the cvap cvap is a, a cluster validation analysis platform available as matlab central file exchange the second case study today i discuss about the classification matter of metal stations again data changes in this case we try to use here the fuzzy cluster analysis and the cluster analysis it was proved that the fuzzy cluster analysis performing better than the k means algorithm 
in, in terms of the distribution of the meteorological stations. The last case study I told you as, as a response to yesterday, some of the query raised by one other participant. Definitely you can group, you can cluster the GCMs. Here we usually hear K-means algorithm, but you can try even for the C-means and number of algorithms of that nature where you can cluster. In fact, that is one of the direction anybody wants to work in the GCMs or climate change. One of the direction where you can really try. So with this, I have completed my presentation of yesterday today. Thank you. I am open for discussion. Even at 5.30, I am ready to answer the queries. The best possible from my side. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Professor Sivu Mas Rajagaru. Thanks for your uh, wonderful presentation yesterday and today. And now the discussion part is over to the uh, open to the participants. Sir, there is one question. Can I read that? Hello? Sir, my voice is audible to you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sir, can I read order. the question? Yeah, okay, sir. I'm, uh, is that is this clear now, sir? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, okay, sir. So someone is asking in DB index, what does that uh, U stands for partition? What, did, what does it mean? In the case of fuzzy curse analysis? In DB index. D DB index? What that what is that U stands for a partition? One minute. Yes, sir. What is the U? Yeah, that, that they are asking us that. You can tell this is nothing but K. I am complete DB David Days index for the cluster size three. If the if the, if the clusters are three. I am complete DB index for the cluster size 3. You, you become cluster size. Okay. Yes? Yes, okay, sir. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, uh, some other questions can uh, the participants can post in the chat box yes. or else even you can uh, uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. The speaker is ready to address you. Uh, uh, ask a little bit loudly. Yeah. Uh, Pro Professor Namaskar, uh, first of all, uh, this is Satya Muthi, sir, from Kumarul College, Koyamathur. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, my question, sir, when we approach FASI, the yeah. uh, expert's opinion alone should be taken or uh, the common people or maybe the common uh, opinion also could be included, sir? See, there are, for example, when we go for fussy, the expert uh, opinion should be taken and then we have to go for model it, sir. No. Uh, can you ask him? Are you asking me which part of my presentation? No, no. I, I'm not a uh, part. I'm not just generally I'm asking okay. for because when... Okay. 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 One minute. I'm, I can't do that. Ah. Let us assume I'm simply taking this example. Yeah. So this is the opinion of the expert of, ah. take, of taking the views of uh, all the farmers in the command area. Yes, sir. So that is one way you can take. However, if you want, you can segregate your problem into multiple segment problems. Okay, sir. One you can take as expert opinion. Ah. You can cluster. You can see how it, how it is working. Okay. Then you can take up the farmers ah. or maybe some other user groups. So yes, you can segment also you can do it. Perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. That is one way of seeing it. Yes, sir. Yes, Those sir. are this many, this many it, 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 it not required. What okay. you can do, you can you can combine them and you can make only simple matrix. I understand, I understand, I understand. Or the third is that even you can give weightage to this each group, you can give the even the weighted okay. matrix also. Yeah, I understood. I understood. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. So, so uh, earlier I was in the misconception that only the experts have been alone to be taken, but the weightage body is uh, really admirable, sir. Uh, I'll try this also, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, someone else can ask the questions if you have any other queries.
participants are requested to post your questions or you can even unmute yourself and talk with the expert. Feel free, ask me any query, please. You're welcome. Was it Girish? Sir, sir, we are waiting, sir. Yeah, I request the participants to either post your question in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and talk with the speaker. Sir is absolutely uh, no very interested to track. Yes, please. Uh, so, sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, sir. When, when we go for the reliability, sir, uh, based on fuzzy logic modeling, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I'll be a little bit louder, sir. I'll be a little bit louder, sir. Uh, sir, when, when we go for uh, the modeling, sir, how, how far it is reliable with respect to the field aspect, sir? Uh, any studies it has been conducted, sir? Uh, 